the first one let's take up right angle triangle in case of right angle triangle if i take a triangle let's say here and we say that a is one side b is another side a and b are perpendicular so this angle is 90 degree and suppose c is the hypotenuse so the first thing is the pythagoras theorem so i hope everyone remembers pythagoras theorem which says the sum of squares of two perpendicular side that is a square plus b square should be equal to the hypotenuse square that is c square so in this case i have taken c as the hypotenuse so the rule becomes a square plus b square equal to c square all right now what else for right angle triangle we have already seen that the area of right angle triangle is equal to half into product of perpendicular sides so a and b so it is ab or you can also write it as ab divided by 2 now there are some special right angle triangles which you must memorize directly right first one of them is a triangle in which the angles are 30 degree 60 degree and 90 degree now what is important in this let's see if the if i say the smallest side is a which is opposite 30 degree then second side is b which is opposite 60 degree and the third side which is the hypotenuse and the largest that is c in this case the ratio of the sides that is a is to b is to c is straight away equal to 1 is to root 3 is to 2 so you can directly memorize this all right so one thing that you can see that the hypotenuse is double of the smallest side and the middle side is root 3 times the smallest side so basically the ratio of the sides is 1 is to root 3 is to 2 right this is one special triangle similarly there's another triangle which is special that is isosceles right angle triangle now if the triangle is isosceles that means these two angles should be equal these two sides should be equal and if this is 90 degree the other two angles will be 45 and 45 so this is one special triangle in which as you can see these two sides will be let's say if it is a a then this has to be a root 2 so in this case sides ratio will be 1 is to 1 is to root 2 so isosceles right angle triangle the sides ratio is 1 is to 1 is to root 2 all right now there is one other special triangle that will help if you remember it's an isosceles obtuse angle triangle right so if they say this is 120 degree and these two sides are equal then you can calculate from the sum of the angles 180 degree these two angles will be 30 degree and 30 degree in this case the side ratio is let's say if it is a this will also be a then this side will be a root 3 so the ratio of sides will be 1 is to 1 is to root 3 so try and see that you memorize all these three special triangles right so 30 60 90 degree the ratio of sides is 1 is to root 3 is to 2 45 45 90 degree the ratio of sides is 1 is to 1 is to root 2 and 30 degree 30 degree 120 degree the ratio of sides is 1 is to 1 is to root 3 so these are some special triangles that you need to memorize with the help of the angles similarly there are some special right angle triangles that you have to memorize with the help of their values of sides if the ratio of sides is 3 is to 4 is to 5 you can check it 3 square is 9 4 square is 16 9 plus 16 is 25 which is 5 square so if the ratio of sides is 3 4 5 that means they are right angle triangle so for example if you double them 6 8 10 they will definitely form a right angle triangle if you take three times it is 9 12 15 right if you take let's say four times that is 12 16 20 if you take five times that means 15 20 25 or any other multiple so all these triplets are pythagorean triplets and that means they all form right angle triangles right so this is one very important ratio of sides let's take another one that is 5 12 13 so if the sides are in the ratio 5 12 13 they will definitely form a right angle triangle let's take examples of this 5 12 13 itself then the double of them let's say 10 24 26 or let's say three times that is 15 36 and 39 so these are all examples of this so there are many other triplets also that you must memorize so first one if of them is 3 4 5 second one 5 12 13 all right then another one is 8 15 17 right and their multiples then another one is 7 24 25 and one more that you can memorize is 20 21 29 see understand how it is utilized if you are given with one side as 20 other side as 21 and it says it is a right angle triangle then without calculation you can see that the third side has to be 29 because you remember this ratio that is how these triplets will be helpful all right now there is one important property of right angle triangles 
Suppose we said this is a right angle triangle ABC. This is side A. Suppose this is a right angle triangle. This is let's say side A, this is side B and this is 90 degree and this third side is C. Then what is the length of perpendicular drawn from this, this vertex? Let's say it is C, this is A, this is B. So from vertex C to the hypotenuse. The length of perpendicular from the 90 degree or the right angle point to the hypotenuse. What is the length of this? So suppose this length of perpendicular is P, then this P length is calculated as A into B that is the product of perpendicular side divided by the hypotenuse that is C. Right? How does it come? It, it is very simple to understand. If you calculate the area, area special formula for right angle triangle is half into the product of perpendicular side that is A into B. And from the height and base formula, if I take base as C, this one, right, then the height will be this P. So from there we can get half base into height, so C into P. And this gives us very clearly half and half cancel and we get P is equal to A into B divided by C. So this you can directly memorize as a formula. That is the length of perpendicular from right angle to the hypotenuse is A into B divided by C. All right. Now let's go to the next special type of triangle that is equilateral triangle. So suppose we take an equilateral triangle in which all the sides are A. Now the first thing, the first thing is the height of this equilateral triangle. Suppose this is height H. Right? You can calculate it, but you can directly memorize also it is root 3 by 2 times the side. So if side is A, height is equal to straight away root 3 by 2 times A. Similarly, there are some other things also. The area you can calculate from here, we have already done, it is root 3 by 4 into the side square. That is A square. Then comes circumradius. Now what is the meaning of circumradius? Circumradius is the radius of circle which circumscribes the entire triangle. That is the circle that passes through all the three vertices of this triangle, right? This is the circumcenter, this length is circumradius. Now circumradius, let's say capital R, is equal to A divided by root 3. So for equilateral triangle, there is a direct formula, side divided by root 3. And then finally, in radius, that is usually presented as small r, it is equal to side divided by 2 root 3. Now what is in radius? In radius is the radius of inner circle. Right, the circle that touches all the three sides. The centers are same, circumcenter and center both are same. This length is the in radius. So the upper part of this height is capital R, the lower part is small r. Right, so these are the four formula related to the equilateral triangle. Height is root 3 by 2 times a, area root 3 by 4 a square, circumradius is side by root 3, in radius side by 2 root 3. Okay. There is one more thing that we have left in right angle triangle. Let's go back and complete that. For a right angle triangle, circumradius, there is a direct formula. It is simply equal to half of hypotenuse. All right. So it is hypotenuse divided by 2. So in this case, if I take on the hypotenuse as C, it will be straight away C by 2. Right. So be careful for uh, a right angle triangle also, the length of circumradius can be directly calculated as half of hypotenuse. Okay, circumradius means the radius of this circle. So actually in case of right angle triangle, the hypotenuse becomes the diameter. Okay, this if you draw the circle passing through all three vertices, this length becomes diameter. So obviously uh, the half of this length will be the radius of that circle. All right, now let's go ahead.